I've been excited to make this video. It's not going to be based on my body transformation, although that is a big part of my self-improvement, but in this probably long video, I'm gonna be explaining each and every step, each and every part of my self-improvement journey. It's been six years. I started when I was 17 and a half and I turned 23 in June. And for your benefit, I'm gonna explain each and every bit of detail, what I did to go from each step and how I ended up where I am now at a point where I feel genuinely happy and proud of who I am. All right, this is a very long video. It's me from the future right now. I've just finished editing it and it's taken me like four days. It's one and a half hours long, so it's okay if you can't watch all of it. So what you can do instead, if you're limited on time, is either leave a like or add it to your watch later on YouTube. Do either one of those and then you can quickly find this video again. And then when you get time, for example, you're on the stationary bike doing cardio or you're going for a walk or just before bedtime you want to watch another 20 minutes, you can easily find this video. So what was I like when I was a teenager during high school? I was a gamer. I played video games quite a lot. Do you know what's funny? I, I consider myself a video gamer. I consider myself someone who played a lot of video games, but I only ever was allowed to play one or two hours a day. But my mind would be full of the thoughts of the games. That's all I would think about was RuneScape and Minecraft and League of Legends. And that's how I spent my time just thinking about these games or researching them and playing them. I had quite an obsessive personality. I was obsessed with these games. I would research them and search up guides and I would think about them and dream about them even when I wasn't playing them. This was weird at the time to be obsessed with these games, but this obsessive personality would later on benefit my self-improvement because I became obsessed with making progress in the gym and in my life. So in high school, I had a couple of close friends, but I used to think everyone was my friend. I used to think that we were just all friends. If you saw someone and you smiled and you spoke to them a little bit, I considered that a friendship. I didn't realize till after high school that the majority of people there are obviously not your friends. You're just speaking to each other because you're in the same room and you have the same struggle. But that doesn't actually define friendship. I think the real version of friendship didn't occur to me till later on, about five years later when I was in college, which is like, I'm in the UK, so I have to clarify this. I'm in the UK. We have high school until we're 16 and then college until we're 18 and then university until we're 21 to 22. So my college is probably your high school or something like that. I was quite a lonely kid, even though I didn't really consider myself lonely. I had a couple of friends and after I'd come home from school, I'd be around my family and maybe I'd be spending time with one of my best friends. So I didn't feel lonely, but... I think looking back at it now, I had a couple of good friends and I was in groups of friendships that now that I'm older and more mature, I can look back and just know that they weren't really friendships. Yeah, we hung out with each other, but it's not really the type of friendship that I consider is friendship now. Now that I'm older, I consider friendship is a sort of brotherhood. It's not just someone you go chill with and watch movies with and laugh with. Friendship is like a partnership. It's like someone having your back. And we didn't have that, definitely not. I had that with a few friends and I'm very, very grateful for them. My one best friend, Hayden, was like a brother to me. He was the first person I ever opened up to, so. I don't think he likes self-improvement YouTube videos, so I doubt he's gonna be watching this, but I'm grateful for you, Hayden. <laughs> I remember in high school, I even asked my friend Hayden that I wanted to do this challenge for us to get a six pack. I kept on seeing these videos and all of this stuff online that, oh, a six pack, get a six pack and all the girls would like you. And I wanted the girls to like me. I've never been really afraid. Well, no, I was a, young and not very confident guy and rejection scared me. I didn't realize it was normal to want attraction from girls. I think through my teenage years, through my high school period, that was like the one big dilemma I had where I felt like I wasn't 
able to or allowed to get girls or, or allowed to speak to the opposite sex. I just found it weird and like uncomfortable. And the only way I could speak to girls was if I was like bullying them. I was one of those kids. I was like, if I had a crush on a girl, I'd be horrible to her. Just, I don't know why. Like, I just didn't know how to speak to them and I'd panic. And if we were having a conversation, I'd just be mean. Obviously, I regret that, but what can you do? I didn't have any confidence to just speak to them like they were normal people, so. So, end of high school, I got fat. <laughs> I literally, I started gaining weight. I started eating more, exercising a lot less. I became one of those little chubby kids who refused to do the physical education class so I wouldn't bring my sports clothes in. I would just have to sit at the side and just walk around or write something down whilst all the other kids were playing like football and something. I lost all desire. I used to, I used to, in, to be honest, no, I was going to say that I used to enjoy sports, but now that I think back, even in primary school, I used to enjoy talking on the football pitch and not actually playing football. I was never too good and I felt like I would enjoy the sports a lot more if I was more involved, but it's quite like a competitive area when you're playing sports in like high school and stuff amongst the boys. No one would pass the ball to me, so I'd literally just be bored. Maybe I'd get to touch the ball like once in the entire half an hour, so I wouldn't even enjoy it. So what I would just do is go on the football pitch and just talk to people and like stand next to the goalkeeper and talk to him. We'd have a conversation and he'd let like the ball through and blame it on me, but I didn't care. I was just, I enjoyed talking to people, so. <clears throat> so I got fat and I felt like end of high school, I started feeling lonely. I stopped hanging out with the same friends, like all of my high school friends. Uh, I had some very, very, well, I still do to be honest, but I had some very good friends online. Three guys I can think of in particular right now. I used to come back home, hop on my laptop and we would play Minecraft and League of Legends and RuneScape together. And we would literally Skype every single day. And I still talk, well, I talk to two of them right now and just the third guy I literally just messaged and we had a conversation two weeks ago. And it was, I always found it cringy when people said like, oh, you know, online friends are as good as real friends. But it was true, those, those guys, Backed me. Those guys were like my actual brotherhood. They were the ones who respected me, who they were excited when I would come online. It, I never got that kind of feeling with most of the friends I had in real life, apart from like the few very best friends who genuinely did like me and they respect, like respected me and they enjoyed my company. But I felt like most of the people I considered friends, it was only just because we were in the same class and I, I was a little bit delusional. I think this is all relevant because as we'll go on to find out and talk about my two my two biggest kind of areas needed for development my the two places the two areas that I wanted to improve on were making more friends and also getting more girls being a more attractive to get girls they, they were the two places that I was lacking in life almost everything else I felt pretty happy with. I was actually quite a naturally happy kid. Um, and I still am. I'm one of those people that if you put me inside of a box, I'll smile. I don't need any kind of like outside circumstance to make me happy. I'm just naturally happy. I always have been and I'm pretty sure I always will be. I used to wake up and I'd literally just be smiling and running down the stairs and you know, I would have no reason to smile, no reason to be happy, but I, it was like my natural state. and. That I'm lucky for that. I'm very grateful for that. So where are we? So end of high school, I'm about 16. I got pretty fat, lost, somewhat lost friends and going into college now. So going into college, a little bit chubby. And over this summer, I dieted down. I had never been able to diet before, but I, I wanted to for years. I tried to for years and I just didn't really know how to do it. I wasn't like, you'll, I'll have pictures up. I wasn't really fat. I wasn't like a fat kid, but I was getting chubbier. And that's not a good place to be when you're one of the people who literally wanted to get a six pack and I wanted to do like a six pack challenge and all this. And I, I definitely had like a bloating stomach. And I still do. It's, it must be like some kind of genetics or something, but I can lean down and see my abs. But I still, I naturally am one of those people who just has a stomach, even if I have abs and stuff like that. But... So it's interesting, my first period of success in, f not even fitness, in just health and not even health, to be honest, it wasn't healthy. It was just 
simply a low calorie diet. I ate 1,200 calories a day, three meals, that was it. And I'm pretty sure that that stunted my, my puberty growth. Like I, I just grew. I was quite a short kid as well. And now I'm six foot one, which I am blessed to say that I am six foot one. But I remember during this period, I was quite short. And I'm one of those guys who I was short until I was 17. And then I went up like six inches in a few months. And people thought I was like walking on my tiptoes, but generally I just grew. But it was strange. That was the period that I was on my low calorie diet. Eating that low calorie diet, I'm pretty sure left me with like tiny like wrists and calves and ankles. It left me with like really weak joints. That's the period that I'm pretty sure I should have been bulking. I should have been eating a calorie surplus because that would have meant that I filled out my frame, but I didn't, I was eating so low, but that was okay because I lost like 20 pounds. I went into college looking slim. I wasn't like confident. I wasn't really, I wasn't really happy. Do you know what? That's actually, I just realized that, that I went into college and I didn't actually feel happy. It's like one of the few, one of the few moments at this point in time that I can actually remember where I wasn't that same happy kid anymore. And now I know why that is. I wasn't allowed to go on my computer to play games. My parents thought it would be a really good idea to block my computer from being able to like, you know, play video games for longer than one hour. Um, or even anything at all, I'm pretty sure during college, because they wanted me to focus on my studies. And um, it's, it's a long story, isn't it? They wanted me to focus on my studies and thought that games were distracting me. So immediately whilst taking my sort of laptop away from me, I had lost the online friends that meant quite a lot to me and I stopped playing with them almost entirely. And I wasn't friends with most of the people from high school anymore. So I went into college and I was lonely. I remember the first two months or so of college, like I literally felt like I wasn't speaking to anyone and I was so embarrassed by that. I went into college and none of my, like my lunchtime, my free periods, none of it lined up with anyone I knew. And I was too shy to go and speak to new people. So Anytime I had even 45 minutes free, I would literally just cycle home and sit down for like 20 minutes because I didn't want to sit by myself in, uh, shit. That just made me really sad. <sighs> You'll realize as we go along that I'm a crier. So I was really lonely at this point in time. I think this was, the first time in my life that I would like, I fully considered myself lonely. I didn't have any friends and the friends that I did have, the people that I did know, uh, it just, it wasn't aligned for us to like see each other during college. So I was literally like, I had the choice of either sitting by myself or, you know, approaching someone else and trying to make new friends, which I could not do. I had, I did not have the confidence to speak to someone new or just come home to my safe space and just, sit for a few minutes and then literally just bike back to college. So I was skinny. I was probably a few months into college and my brother had started weightlifting. He turned the garage into like a small gym. He got a bench and he wanted to like get muscles and stuff. And he got me on it as well. I remember the little colored dumbbells that we used to have. He got me on them first and then eventually invited me into the garage and taught me how to lift. Put me on a five day row split, chest, back, legs, shoulders, arms, no abs, no calves. <laughs> it wasn't a great split, but I was excited. And honestly, two weeks in, I started seeing a difference. One month in, other people started seeing a difference. Here's my first ever picture that I took. Uh, kind of, not really shirtless, but I'm sure in my stomach. All I wanted at this point was abs. I didn't realize that like, oh, you can grow arms too. I just thought all of this was just so I could get abs. Like, So I had been lifting now for a couple of months and adopted what I call the progress mentality where I was just focused on making progress. I realized that you can literally better yourself. Weightlifting did this to me. Self-improvement is real. I didn't ever consider it before that you can actually better your life 
by your own actions. It's not exactly something that's taught to us in school. Like it kind of is, you're taught to work hard and stuff, but you're not really taught exactly how to get from a low point up to a high point. You just kind of wait for it to happen. At least I did. No one ever taught me that you can do that until I started lifting and then I taught myself. I realized that you can literally just change yourself. And I was addicted to this because I had played so many video games. The type of video game that I enjoyed most was like RPG role playing game. No, it was like MMORPG, pretty much like a multiplayer role playing game in which you can level up your skills. So you can level up your strength so that you're stronger and you hit people and you do more damage and you level up your defense and then you're like tougher and you can take more damage and you can level up your magic and you know all this stuff. Well, in the, in the garage, when I was weightlifting, I was leveling up my strength it was like I was in an MMORPG in real life. I was leveling up my attributes. I was literally excelling. It was like a quest. That was my quest. My quest named get a aesthetic body, get an attractive body. My quest had begun. So then my confidence increased. For the first time in my life, I literally started getting a little bit more confident and I started getting a little bit happier. I started being able to speak to more people and being a little bit louder in college and actually being able to speak out, out loud and answer questions. I strengthened friendships with a few people I knew already from high school and we became a little bit closer. And then I started playing video games with real life friends and that was quite nice as well. So we would all come home from college and then play League of Legends together. And that made me feel like I, I had friends again. So literally life from feeling like I was at the bottom, like the lowest I could be, life just bumped up in the space of six months or so. I kept on working hard in the gym. I kept on playing video games with new friends and I kept on speaking to people and just being kind of a bit louder and slightly being able to talk to people and girls in my class. Eventually I got a girlfriend. I got my first ever girlfriend. I had my first kiss at the ripe age of 17. <laughs> I started taking shirtless pictures. I got more and more confident. Girls in college started actually talking about me. I would overhear them or they would come up and tell me like, oh, you know, uh, this other girl in this class was talking about your abs and stuff. And I was there like, I don't even have abs. Like, what are you talking about? Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't even lift, like, I look small. <laughs> All right, so I'm in the second year of college, about six months away from university time, so like ending college. I didn't even know if I'd get into uni at this point. I wasn't even like thinking about it, but. I made a whole new set of friends. Like I literally just, I was, became more social, more confident. I got made to sit down next to this one guy and he was just so friendly straight away and he was a funny guy. And we just talked, we like laughed through the lesson, we got put in trouble and we just became friends straight away. And then he introduced me to his friends and his friends, this group of friends, their free periods, their lunch periods all lined up with mine. And just suddenly I've just got like a whole new group of friends. And these were social people. These were like confident, like happy, funny guys. None of them played like video games or anything. They just like, they went to parties and I got invited into this. And that brought me out of my shell completely. I like, this was the point that I felt like a normal person that I actually had like, I was in group chats and I had people to meet in college and also people to meet outside of college. And I was like, I was strengthening relationships and friendships with literally everyone separately and also together. Then we finished the college assignments and exams. I didn't really work hard on them, but I got accepted into university. It was a surprise. I got accepted to go to uni and uh, I went in September. So this was just a few months later. So I first, I got accepted to what's called a foundation year, where pretty much just means that you weren't smart enough to get into the proper course. So mine was psychology, but you were allowed to come in if you did one extra year before your proper course or foundation year. So my course was four years, even though my degree is like a three year degree. So, but I was happy with that. I got to go to uni. So, and I literally, I didn't even know what uni was. I didn't know what university was. I didn't know what a degree was. At, at this point, honestly, I lived a very sheltered life. I didn't know what jobs were. Genuinely, I know that sounds weird, but like, I genuinely didn't even understand how the world worked. And when I went, when I was happy to go to uni, it was only because it was just like, 
it was like the right thing because my brother and my sister had went and not really because I thought that psychology was a degree that would land me a job that I wanted. Honestly, psychology, like I was getting bad grades in, I was getting D's and E's and like barely ever a C in psychology. And, and I never even imagined going into psychology more. It was literally just going to uni. I was going to be a student in university, which meant that I was gonna be able to pull girls and make new friends. That was pretty much my two like main goals. If I could go back now, obviously, I don't think I would have went to university, at least not then. I, I just, I find it really strange. This is kind of off topic, but I find it really strange that university is pushed so hard to 18 year olds because some 18 year olds do want to go and they will make great use of it. But I was honestly still a child at this point. I sh like I would have been much better off working and experiencing real life for one, two, three years and then going into university. If I went into uni now at this age and this level of maturity, I would have actually studied hard. I would have actually like been grateful for the education and the knowledge. Back then, I didn't know what education, I didn't know what knowledge was. Why would I want knowledge? Why would I want to read a book or learn? I was just like a young, dumb kid who just wanted to have fun and make friends. My first year of university, my foundation year, is, it was, it was just, I don't really have too many memories of it because I, I stayed at home, so I commuted. So I took the train to go to my lectures. And then within a few months, like I just stopped going completely and I just got friends to like sign me into class. And so instead I just did the work at home, which meant that I didn't do much work at all. I didn't really remember much from foundation year because obviously I was just in the same environment and I passed with a pretty good grade, a 2-1, which is like the second best grade you can get. I was very happy about that. But then first year came along. So that was foundation year. Now it's first year. So this is my second year in university. But like, we're just pretending now it's like, this is my first, it's literally classed as first year psychology. So first year came along and I convinced my parents to let me move out for it. They, they fully like, did not want me to move out. My mom especially just, they're very protective parents and they didn't want me to move out at all, but I just kept on annoying them, kept on saying it. And my sister like defended me and she was saying that it'd be a great experience and all this. And so they let me move out. I would have been 19 at this point. And so I booked a student accommodation and <laughs> it was a very, very good time. My self-improvement went up straight away. My social skills exploded, my friendships, my training in the gym, my motivation to train just went up so much when I was living around students and I was just in this kind of like vibe, this lifestyle. I just I wanted to look as good as possible. I remember I moved in and there was like parties and nights out and stuff. And this was like one of the first times that I felt like a high value man. Any party I was at, any kind of event or anything, people were coming up to me and literally grabbing my arms and whoa, nice arms. Like what gym do you go to? Would you train us? Life was good. I'd worked hard on my body, my mind, my social skills, my confidence, and it was literally paying off tenfold. I got to experience things that I will never forget. I am so grateful for the experiences that I had in this first year. I joined the American football team and got like a sense of brotherhood from there. I actually left, so my confidence did go up, but I was still quite insecure. And I was insecure about my weight, actually with it being quite low. I joined American football and I was like the lightest person there, even though I wasn't the skinniest. I've just always been a very li lightweight guy. I'm six foot one and I'm 160 something pounds right now, which is pretty low for someone my height. With my height, you'd expect my weight to be at least 20 to 30 pounds heavier, especially with my size as well. And so I was always quite insecure about my weight in American football because that meant that you know, you're, you're bumping into each other like this. I'd get pushed back by so much. And eventually within three-ish months, I quit American football. My mentality was, oh, I'll quit and I'll focus more on weightlifting, which it did make sense. Weightlifting was my main hobby, but I shouldn't have left. That was, I still, I say this to a lot of people who know me that leaving American football was one of my biggest regrets in life because there was just, there were so many opportunities. If you're going to university in the UK or pretty much any country, join the sport team, 
any sport, make sure it's one of those social sports like American football, rugby, cricket, football, anything, join it because there's just so much more to do. It's like your experience going to university isn't even half as much as your experience going to university and also joining a sports team. So all of first year was literally just going to lectures, staying up late, doing all nighters. I, f I made best friends with a guy who also used to play RuneScape. So we had a period of around two, three weeks of him literally just coming to my place and us just staying up on our laptops, playing RuneScape and stuff. And then we'd go out, we'd go to nightclubs and we'd go to parties. And I just, I remember being so social and so happy and feeling so fulfilled with life that I was literally where I wanted to be right now. And I didn't really feel like I was working too hard on university on that my actual studies but I ended first year with the second best grade you could get I ended first year with a 2-1 again like 65% I got which is pretty good I I don't think I've ever been a good student in my life I, I it's only now that I have like the confidence and the maturity to to say this like it's normal so I came back to Warrington and I was still working hard on my body working hard in the gym I this was at the point when like I was the weightlifting guy I was the muscular guy not to like sound big big headed but like everyone knew me as the guy who just posted shirtless pictures I changed so much and I real I came back after first year and realized that nothing had changed here whatsoever everyone was the same I, I was working hard and I was achieving things and I was going so far away from th the guy that I was and I was coming back and these guys were acting like everything I was saying was like a lie and that like I was pretending to be someone I wasn't, which I, it's understandable. I, I understand their point of view because they had seen me for years be that little shy guy and be the, the insecure guy that they knew. And within two years, within one year, really, I went away and suddenly I'm coming back with all these stories and I'm coming back like a confident guy and it just spiked something in them. And so I came back and I realized like, I probably can't be friends with these people who I've pretty much been friends with for six, seven, seven years, eight years, which was sad because then I didn't really know anyone else in Warrington. So my closest friend of college at the end of college we became like best friends uh, he he was in a serious relationship in college and so this was a whole year and a half later and he was still in the same relationship and so it was just i didn't see much of him and so when i came back here i actually felt lonely straight away even though i had like contacts even though i had all these friends i made in my student city and we all knew that we were all about to move back in in september so i had like two months here two to three months back here all i did was just stay to myself i went to the garage gym a lot and i just trained i bulked up this was the first time where like i actually looked pretty decent i bulked up and my weight went up, I looked pretty beefy. I was training for American football. I was re gonna rejoin for my second year. I couldn't wait. I was training hard for it. I got hit with some shin splints. I got such a bad case of shin splints that didn't go away for the entire of this summer. It would hurt my legs to walk. And I was still training anyway. I set hard goals. I set goals to achieve in that summer before university started again so I could go to uni and join the American Football Club and make up for the time I lost and stuff. And I literally, I couldn't even run for longer than 20 seconds without feeling like I was in so much pain. And I used to be so upset by that because I was genuinely, I was training so hard and I just lost motivation. I just, I well, no, I, the thing is, this took months. Like, I I lost motivation, but I kept on going. I, I did the hard work when I didn't feel like it. And I just kept on going to train, and I just... The pain didn't get any better. And back then, I didn't really... I was a young guy, so, and I was not as... What's the word? I was, like, a young guy, and so I didn't really know that when you get a pain in any kind of physical training there's two things you should do. One, take time off straight away, take time off. And two, Google or YouTube your symptoms. That's something I teach people now, but I, back then I didn't know. So I thought it was just like, I just have to suffer in silence. So that was quite sad, but I was excited for university to start again in September. I was working hard on my body. 
throughout all of this time, like I've mentioned in my previous videos, I pretty much only, my biggest sort of self-improvement focus was my body. It was just looking as big as possible. And my goal was eventually to become a fitness YouTuber. I think that's why I didn't really ever put effort into my studies because I was never going to get a job in psychology. It was always going to be YouTuber. And because I was getting so obsessed with the gym, I realized, oh, fitness YouTuber, that is my my purpose. That's my my goal in life. And that's what I was putting it all to. But as I've made a video of this previously, I thought I looked ugly on camera. So I literally didn't make videos during this time. I just, I wanted to get bigger and bigger and leaner and leaner because I felt like my current body was not good enough to be put onto YouTube, which is nonsense because honestly, now that I think about it, it's like anyone can, can grow on YouTube and it's literally more about where you are right now because people would have watched that. People would have watched a young student bodybuilder who's not massive, but he's growing. People would have watched that. Of course they would have, but I was a little bit insecure still. I was a confident guy, but I was insecure with some areas and I was still trying to like improve myself. But nevertheless, second year of university began in September. I moved into the same building and this time, I remember before I moved in, I got allocated, this is kind of separate. Well, yeah, it is important to be honest. I got allocated a room and because I had lived there for a year, I knew where that room was and I knew that those rooms were like, eh. But I knew that there was a block in this accommodation which which just had the best rooms and the best everything. So I emailed in and I requested to change and I got put in the highest room. And I swear to God, it's literally like I got the best room in the entire building. My ceiling was like twice the size of a normal room. I had like a pretty nice view as well. I'll, I'll hopefully be able to find videos of this moment, but I moved in and everything that happened in first year was like this compared to second year. Second year of university was like, I, I became so much more confident I felt like I was a confident guy in first year, but second year was different. I like, I came in with a plan. I came in knowing that most people are quite shy. And so I was going to be the one who started everything. So I came in and I started just walking up to people and just approaching them and inviting them to be my friend, inviting them into the fun. I was like the initiator of everything. I had a flat party for like two weeks straight. I felt like the king of this student accommodation. Like everyone seemed to know me. I would just go from my room to the gym. So this accommodation had a gym inside of it. I'd go from my room to the gym. And usually there would always be at least one, if not two or three people that I'd walk past who knew me and they'd be like, oh yeah, when's the next party? And oh, are you going to the gym? Can I come with you and stuff? And people wanted to come train with me and stuff because I was just, I was out there. I, I lived so long just being in quite like a secluded life that I was making up for it. So I was like, that's the best way to say it. I was making up for it and I was, I was enjoying it. So this was the first time in my life that I felt popular. I actually felt like the popular guy. Like the, I was literally like the popularist, popular, I don't know how the word is, but like I literally, I just felt so popular. I felt like I had brotherhood. I felt like I had like close male friends who actually backed me, who actually cared about me and respected me. But I also felt like I was popular in the vanity sense that a lot of people knew me. Not, people who I wouldn't consider like, you know, great friends, but just people who knew me and they were like, we were cool with each other. And that made me feel so, it just felt great. Do you know what I mean? Like if you've never experienced it in your life, you, I don't think you'd be able to understand because I wouldn't. And I, I would be looking at this video thinking like, Oh, it's not, it's not that good. Like I remember the popular guy in high school is nothing right. But like, I'm telling you that popular guy in high school, he felt fulfilled. And then, so I didn't join American football for my second year, but I joined boxing and the boxing club was pretty trash. I'm not going to lie there because it wasn't like a social sport. It got almost no funding. And I feel like that's the same for most universities, the biggest socialist sports socialist now nah. the biggest like social sports get the most funding which means that they can do the most things and boxing was just a small club which had like 10 20 people come and so we literally just got like an empty room with a few bags and stuff not even bags like a few just gloves and stuff but the guys who were there were 
great guys. We we literally just became friends. I was the initiator again. I would literally I would go to boxing and invite all of these guys to come to my party and come to my night out to the club that I was gonna go to with like other friends. And all of these guys were so keen. That's what I realized that any person in in university like they're all in the same position they all wish they had more friends and they all wish they all not to sound big-headed again they all wish they had a guy like me come up to them and invite them into the fun that we were having that's what i realized and that was so powerful i realized that if you're the initiator of the fun if you're the one if you're the guy who's having so much fun and you go up to someone and you invite them to join you they will feel so grateful for you and they will like literally respect you and admire you and you'll become so close friends with that i like together and so that's what i did with all the guys from boxing we we it was like a sense of brotherhood we literally would punch each other and pop each other's noses make make each other bleed and then would hug each other and bring us like i'd bring them to my place i they'd invite me to theirs would go out together and just do crazy stuff together i remember this one of the first nights i invited all of the guys from boxing out i it was like this it was at this point in time where i realized <laughs> It was at this point in time with for the first time in my life that I became a completely honest man. I I stopped telling lies. I realized that lying is a symptom of low confidence. And this was something that became one of my core values in life before I even knew what core values were. I just realized that if you're a confident person, you will never lie. If you're a confident person, you will be brutally honest because that is how you feel. And so during this point in time, I stopped being shy about what I wanted. I brought all these guys out from boxing and I literally went up to them straight up and just said, yo, I'm trying to make new friends. I want like a brotherhood of guys who will back me, who will respect me, who I can respect, who we can grow together. We can work hard together. We can party together and go and get girls together and go and get food together and just work and just enjoy our lives together. And I feel like these guys, when I said it to them in this night, they were actually so astounded because I felt like, I feel like it's so normal to just have basic conversations where you kind of hide your intention, where you 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 want to be friends with this person, they want to be friends with you, but you're just kind of like, you don't want to be, it seems weird to say that. It seems weird to say like, this is what I want and I'm liking your vibe right now. So like, are you liking my vibe? Are we probably going to be friends? It, it was weird to, for me to say that just a few months before this. But as my confidence increased, I just realized I didn't have time for lies. I didn't have time for being hiding behind my intentions. That made people seem to respect me a lot. I just became a direct confront. I became a direct confrontational, confrontational guy. But I said what was on my mind with complete honesty, and people seemed to respect it. And honestly, it, I respected it myself. I surprised myself at the way I would talk to people in like in a good way. If I wanted a girl, I'd say I wanted her. If I wanted to be friends with this guy, I would say I wanted to be friends with this guy. If I didn't want to be friends with this guy, I would say I didn't want to be friends with this guy. This was also the time when I got a name for myself as a heartbreaker. So I felt like I was getting made to be like a bad guy, but I still disagree with that. I still, honestly, I, one thing, first of all, even if it sound, makes me sound bad, but like, I, I was happy that I was the heartbreaker. I was happy that like, I was actually included in any of the romance. Like all of my life, I was, I heard about stories of like girls liking the jerks and girls liking the guys who make them cry and stuff. And I just, I'm not gonna lie, like any little innocent guy wants to be that guy. Any little innocent, because it means that that's the, the guy that girls were chasing anyway. And now I got made to be that guy and now realize that it's all BS. It's it's more that like the girls like you and you just didn't reciprocate what they wanted, which was relationships. Like everyone wanted a relationship in university at this age and I didn't. I made it so clear to every girl that wanted to fully date me that I was not going to get into a relationship in university. That made me seem like a bad guy. You can be the judge. You can judge me and say that I'm a bad guy. I don't believe I was. I still don't believe. I didn't believe I was then and I still don't believe I am now because 
I was completely and brutally honest with it. I said it straight up, no, I'm not getting into a relationship, especially not with the girls that were going to nightclubs with me because that whole scene, I'm telling like that whole scene, including myself, it's full of like promiscuity, promiscuity, I don't know how you say it, but like just casualness and you just, you can't trust people who, go, who are in that environment. And that's myself included. I'm not exempting myself. When you're in that environment, the prime environment where everyone's getting laid, no one's trustworthy there. No, no girl has a boyfriend in the club. No guy has a girlfriend when he's in the club. I'm telling you, if you, if you disagree, it's simply because you haven't been to enough clubs to see that. You haven't been invited to enough parties to see what goes on here. After I worked on myself for a while and I, I felt like I was somewhat attractive and girls found me attractive, Suddenly the girls didn't shout out that they had a boyfriend anymore. They, they started hiding the fact that they had a boyfriend. It was only later when I'd see it on Instagram that they're in like a five year relationship. Or they'd like, they'd cheat. so many girls would just cheat on their boyfriends. And it, around this time, I realized that this was actually a weird scene that I had gotten into that I was so happy to be into like, you know, the social life. And I was so happy to be, in the party environment, the social party, popular environment. But it was around this point that I realized that these people are actually kind of messed up, including myself, because there's only this, it says something about you when you're going out one, two, three times a week and you're just getting drunk and you're doing drugs. Like the casualness is just rampant. It says something about you when you're in that lifestyle. And I keep saying it includes me as well. I'm not just making fun of people and then not including myself. I, it says something about me. I had making up to do. I thought I was cool to be in this position. And I thought I was like Mr. Big Man because I was going to clubs and getting some action for the first time in my life. But it was near the end of my second year that I realized that. But then, I don't know, I didn't really stop then either. But so third year of university, I moved into a fancy apartment. It was ah, oh, this apartment was like one of my favorite places to live. Like, I didn't I didn't like my life. Mark. I didn't like my life. I'll go into this a little bit more, but um, in terms of like you know actual home, like where I slept, this apartment was pro like the nicest, probably the best place that I had ever lived in my life. It was fancy. Everyone who came up to this apartment was just impressed. I loved just coming home to it. I lived next to literal celebrities. I lived next to like news broadcasters and like people who were on reality TV shows and stuff. And I felt just like a fancy guy. But when we moved to this apartment, we were still students, me and my friend. And I remember checking how long it would take to go from the apartment to university. It was like 35 minutes. I was like, yeah, this, it's not that bad. Like, 35 minute commute's not horrible. But we just didn't consider the fact that like we, we were lazy students. We were never going to travel 35 minutes to get to university. Our old student accommodation was very close, like less than five minutes from uni. And we were missing half of the days. And so the problem became that we lived so far away that within just two weeks of starting third year, I stopped going into lectures. I stopped doing the work. I just, I got comfy, not even comfy. I literally just... I got really demotivated. I, the place was so peng and we were having fun there and we were enjoying it. But when you're away from the prime location, it's just nowhere near as convenient. When you have to wake up at like 7 a.m. to go to your 9 a.m. lecture, you just, you just don't want to. I, I felt a lot less like a student. I felt a lot less like I was in the prime environment and that I needed to work hard and look good because I was just in this in the vibe in the environment less my body turned to shit I I started eating junk food like crazy I was calling it a bulk that oh yeah I should bulk up to 190 pounds and just keep eating more and more and more like I was eating junk food every single day I was this is when my binge eating disorder became massive and fuck and I was working, this was the first time during university that I was working a part-time job. So my previous years, I didn't need to work because my expenses were quite low and student loans just paid for most of it. But for this year, because we moved to the fancy apartment, my expenses were higher and I had to work a job to afford it all. I was working a part-time job, but my hours were ridiculous. It's my fault because I asked for these hours, but 
I requested because I was off university on Tuesday and Wednesdays that I worked full day Tuesday and Wednesdays. So I was working 12 hour shift Tuesday, 12 hour shift Wednesday. So at Monday night, before I had 24 hours of work for the next two days, I would feel so, oh, I would feel so horrible. I would feel so depressed. Even though I was grateful for the job and I liked, I did like my job, but it's just having to spend that much time making eight pounds an hour. And so what would happen was I would finish work on a Wednesday. I had literally just finished 24 hours of work over two days and straight away, me and my friend would go out. We'd go to a nightclub and I would literally drink away my sorrows. And I got back into that lifestyle again of just partying loads and stuff. And, and then, but this time I was like, it wasn't the same. I wasn't as successful because quite simply because I, I feel like I just got fat and I lost confidence. And so I wasn't really enjoying this same scene as much. I became like, I even, it was a little bit before this. So I, this picture I show you right now is going to be like backwards by six months or so. But I actually remember this exact night I'm going to show you. This was the first time that I could see physical evidence of the pictures where I just seemed like I didn't have anywhere near as much confidence as I did in my second year where like all of the pictures my hands were just closed and I was like just not in like that open happy vibe anymore I was just closed off I was just like not happy again so third year of university was like this the second or so point in my life where I, f I felt like I wasn't happy I felt quite lonely again I had my flatmate and I had like a few people. I had my main girl as well, but I, we lived so far away from the city where the university was. And so during the entire year in the apartment, one group of friends came over once and like two guys came over twice in the entire year. Whereas when I was living in the student accommodation, literally like people were coming up to my room like every single day. And I used to love that vibe. I used to love feeling like I just, it was my place where everyone wanted to come around. And you know, my, my room was really big and stuff. So I would literally just be lying in bed and like friends would knock on and they'd come in and we'd all just sit down and talk. And I love talking. So I, I miss that. I felt lonely in, in third year again. About halfway through my third year of university, I started feeling not not great at all. This was the first time in my life that I fully had mental health problems. I, I remember the night it actually started, the night that before this, so I was in you know this apartment in third year for a few months and although my life felt like it was going down, I wasn't really conscious of it up until this one night that I just couldn't sleep. My flatmate was just being really loud and it just really annoyed me. And I was just awake and I was just, just thinking. And I just realized there and then that I was not happy, that I felt lonely, that it just reminded me of what it felt like at the start of college where I just felt like I didn't have many friends and that I just, I wasn't happy to be me. I had gained so much weight and I could not lose this weight. I could not lose this. And you know, my, my, the biggest thing I had worked on was my body. And when I'm not proud of my body, it's like I've, I've taken all of my accomplishment away. If my biggest accomplishment, if my only accomplishment was my body and my physical health and my fitness, and I had just gotten fat, then I just, it's like I've lost everything. The other things I built up like confidence and social life and popularity, I didn't have it anymore. So it felt like everything I worked for just, it just went, it was fleeting. It just went away from me. I remember this that night and since that night, for a long time afterwards, I fully identified with mental health problems. I, I started feeling so stressed 24 seven. It was, it was about this, it was about this moment when my, intrusive thoughts became very, very apparent. I've mentioned this before in some of my videos. I don't think anyone has really been able to grasp how serious of a problem this was for me. Even people in real life who I told and I tried to explain it to, I, I, I'll, I couldn't even try and explain it to you right now because I'd probably just start crying because I, I lived like that for so long, but Imagine not feeling safe inside of your own mind. 
like you can't you can't run away from it you can't close the door and get underneath your covers when the biggest enemy in your life is your own mind so i was i had like such a negative thought pattern i i started being able to understand what um I just about had started meditating. I just kind of like understood that meditating was, you know, mindfulness and mind wandering and stuff. And so I, I could just about tell when I was mind wandering and it was a lot. And then I started getting into like negative thought cycles where I was in, I was very judgmental to the point that I was mind wandering. And then I was... I was talking bad stuff about myself and I remember that there was times when I had panic attacks and well I don't to be honest I don't really know if they were like real panic attacks or what like the definition of a panic attack is but I remember there was times when I genuinely would like question to myself yeah why don't you just kill yourself like just stop it and and then I would be like wait what the fuck comes why are you saying that and then I'd, I'd be I'd feel crazy like why am I like arguing in my mind like why am I literally I wasn't ever like here's the thing I was never ever debating suicide or self-harm in my entire life never but the it was like the thoughts not even the thoughts were coming up but it was like every now and then it was just like stupid we're just saying why don't you just kill yourself and then I'd be like whoa like why the fuck did I just think about that it was it was I was identifying with my thoughts I I made a video in May when I said uh, I was talking that you are not your thoughts and I feel like this version of me in third year really needed that video that's what I'm that's why I made it I felt like if someone was in my position what would they need to hear and it it is that you are not your thoughts and your thoughts we have messed up thoughts but you cannot identify them and no thought is a bad one during this time I was getting into like during this time I was I was every single day I was feeling like I was having like a negative cycle of thoughts negative thoughts is what I used to say after like a year of meditating and researching and stuff I now realize that there are no negative thoughts they're just thoughts thoughts can't be negative or positive I know it seems like they can but this isn't the video for me to explain how this works but I would when I'd feel like I got a negative thought and then I would be negative to the negative thought and I don't think, I don't think anyone has felt this cycle, but maybe there has been someone who's watching this right now who has had negative thoughts about their negative thoughts and then had negative thoughts about their negative thoughts about their negative thoughts. Because getting into this cycle of, this cycle of thoughts, this train of thought, it's painful, it's very, very stressful. And... As I said, it wasn't something that you could just, it wasn't something that I could just stop. It was constant. With other problems in life, when they're not like physical problems and not mental problems, it's like, it stops at one point. Loneliness feels a bit different when you're a bit busy. Imagine trying to be busy. Imagine trying to do your university work. I'd be trying to like be busy. I'd be trying to do my work for university. And I was just thinking just imagine this it's just this cycle of just bullshit just (laughs) i lived like that for a long time but i still i acted quite normal like no one really knew but i was gonna say no one knew but you know what like i was open about this i've I still had that confidence that i built up i was open i told my family i told my closest people everyone knew but no one could relate and so all it really was was that people could kind of listen and just tell me the same thing like oh don't worry don't worry about it it's all in your head Hamza like but I, I couldn't expect people to know otherwise I couldn't expect people to like treat it better because obviously they had just it's not something that they understood if you've not been through it and I don't think anyone I know has been through something like this So all of this bad mental health, I I didn't really do much work for university. It was my final year, the most important year, and I missed 
I think two pieces of assignments I didn't even do, I, I didn't submit anything. The other pieces of assignments that I did do, I didn't even hit the word count. You know, it's like a 2000 word essay. I would write 700 and submit it because I, I would start the work at like on the same day that it was due. I know people exaggerate and they say this, but like genuinely, if it was due on Monday night, I started it on Sunday or Monday. I got bad grades. I failed a few pieces of work and I had to like reset the like four or five things at once. <clears throat> My job as well was becoming really stressful working those shifts. Imagine like I'm working 24 hour worth of shifts over two days and I would have like an assignment due on Thursday. And so all of this just coupled with more stress, more anxiety, more intrusive thoughts. And my intrusive thoughts were so bad because that made me feel against the general public. I was like convinced that someone was going to attack me. I, I've been through like some traumatic stuff. I No one has asked. I, I thought one time when I talked about my intrusive thoughts, I posted a video. I thought someone might even comment and say like, what happened? Like you mentioned like PTSD. No one even asked, but whatever. Like pretty much like a group of guys tried to stab me. And as much as I want to be like a big macho guy, like I got out of it fine. But... I pretty much got PTSD from that moment. I've had like sleepless nights. I've had like waking up in night sweats in like terror, seeing, feeling it again. It was on a train. And so I've had loads of thoughts and nightmares of trains, like being on a train and feeling it like, like just, I couldn't even explain it properly, but I feel like that caused my intrusive thoughts. So, <clears throat> so for a while I was walking around a friendly guy would walk past me and I, I could see it all play out in my mind of him saying something, me saying something, us fighting or like someone saying something and like exactly how it would play out. And I was just envisioning violent experiences. And this was honestly happening every five to 10 seconds, genuinely every five to 10 seconds. It, it happened a lot less when I was inside my own place or, you know, like inside home, inside like my girl's place or inside my apartment. And so it was at this point when the only time I would leave my apartment was go to the gym. I, I always, because the gym has been such a big passion for me, like I always felt quite safe going there, even though it was quite a walk away. It, going to the gym was like almost always fine. But anywhere else, it, like literally going to the post office to like for my business on eBay or going to the shops and stuff, it was so hard. I remember like my friends wanted to do something. My girl wanted to go out on dates and get drinks and go to get food and stuff. And I would just say like, oh, let's order food. Because the moment I leave my apartment, I'd literally just be thinking about like, just, just thinking about violence. And that made me into a violent guy. That made me into an angry guy. The university exams, the third year, so my most important exams, I did, do you know what? Just, I did an okay amount of revision and studying for them. I, this is when I actually started wanting to like improve my life. And I started like a little bit thinking about mental health and I started getting into journaling. And then I had probably a, a, about a week worth of studying for my exams which isn't a lot, obviously it's not like much for most people, but for me it was actually quite a lot. And straight after the last exam, I went to Thailand and went traveling for a month straight away. I went to Thailand, had a pretty good time and came back July, 2019. So almost exactly a year ago from this point. I came back and my mental health was worse. I couldn't tell why. I had experienced this cycle of negative thoughts for a while and I spent so much time journaling it that the thoughts weren't exactly negative anymore, but they were more, there was just a lot of thoughts. It took me a while to realize that my problem, that the mental health problem was a lack of mindfulness. It was just thoughts that wouldn't stop thinking. It was... <laughs> It was being introspective all the time. Maybe the journaling made it worse, potentially, because I was introspective journaling like almost every day. But throughout the days, I'd literally just be thinking about 
not so much self-improvement, although that was coming back. It was more like I was thinking bad about what I was doing, about any second that I was wasting, and but I wasn't doing anything to change that. So I would, this is when, for example, it felt worse because I would eat a dessert and feel, gu not guilty, but like think you know, negatively of it whilst I was eating it. And so it felt like I didn't even get to enjoy the dessert. And then obviously I've ate dessert and my diet's a little bit worse. And so that happened for a long time. I think looking back at it now, I felt like this because I didn't have many things to be happy about, which is wrong because obviously, you know, with mindfulness, you can be happy with nothing. You can be happy with just like feeling the sun on your face. But at this point in time, it, it was like I couldn't focus on the sun on my face. If I had the sun on my face and a beautiful sun sunset or sunrise and anything you can think of, I was thinking through it. I had deep negative thoughts just going all of the time through eating, through sleeping, through anything. I was just thinking loads, thinking too much. I was just weighing up decisions and weighing up this and that and like what I wanted to do in my life. And I... That's why I just realized I completely forgot uh, to explain. So I came back in July. No, I came back in August 2019. And the day I came back, I checked my results for university and I passed. I graduated. I literally got my degree. I Whilst I was in Thailand, I was sure that I was going to fail. I was sure that I was going to have to reset the third year of uni. And honestly, I wanted that to happen. I I was excited to fail because if I failed, I was going to rebook a place in the student accommodation that I loved so much. And it's like, it holds a special place in my heart. I was going to rebook there and I was going to have the, the final year of university where I actually tried and worked hard and had, you know, like the year I missed out on because I felt like I lived so far away and I felt like I wasn't a student. And so I came back, I graduated, I got the degree and whilst I was a little bit happy, it was like, oh, now what? Overnight, I went from being a student to being unemployed with a degree that you can't really even get a job in unless you carry on to do a master's, like another four years. And I got like a low grade for the degree. I literally just, just about passed. I got 40%, like a third honors, which meant that like, it wasn't really worth that much all those years anyway. And so after seeing my result, I was like, so it was so anticlimactic. Cause I was like, now what? Like what was those years for? I, I had some great times, but you know, the final year of university, how negative it felt it kind of counteracted that. And so I was left with, me I was left with mental health problems. And now like, I didn't get anything off it. I was so excited to fail and to reset and to like, you know, really work hard and go back into the environment that I felt like I was just like happy. And when I didn't get to do that, I was just directionless. And that, I think this explains the, the worst mental health because then for a while, I was completely directionless in life. And I was slowly, very, very slowly improving my fitness. I was slowly getting leaner and leaner. This is the point now where during all of third year, I didn't lose any weight. I even gained weight. And just after coming back from Thailand, I actually consistently started losing weight again for the first time. I got my love back for the gym because I wasn't in university and I left my job to go to Thailand. So when I came back, I was broke, but I had literally just, I was broken and unemployed. I had like complete free time. So I was literally waking up at 5 a.m. and going to the gym. And you know what? Being broke and being unemployed was one of the best things that happened to me because look what happened. I literally started waking up at 5 a.m., running to the gym in pitch black, running back home, and then literally started th like planning and journaling and thinking about things I wanted to do. And I would research things and I was looking for another, I was looking for like a different course that I could study and all this. And so for a few months, I was quite directionless, but I started going in a direction. I started doing the hard work when I didn't feel like it. I started 
I, I realize that motivation and direction comes after action. You just, you have to do action. You have to do something first and then you'll find the way. You can't just sit and find the way. The way doesn't find you. You find the way, but you have to do something because when you do something, you try something. If you don't like it, you found a way which is not that thing. And so I was just trying new things. I was like researching. I joined uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I joined MMA. I was training hard in the gym again for the first time, five, six days, seven days a week. I was running as well. This for the first time ever in my life, I fixed my running, my shin splints problem. And I actually became like somewhat of a runner. And from that period of time, I didn't really give up running from now. It's been, a, it's been pretty much a year. I had like periods on and off, but that's when like my running actually started as like a hobby for me. And so I was really broke. I didn't have a job. I didn't have any income. Um, well, I had like some income. I had very little income from like eBay and stuff. And that was just about enough to keep me going. And so I started applying for jobs. I started thinking, okay, what can I, what can I get here? And like I said, with the psychology degree I had, there was really not that much. So really the only jobs that I could get were ones that I honestly could have gotten before the four years of university, which was quite sad, but I was searching for part-time jobs, full-time jobs. They were pretty much just receptionists, like customer service, because I had worked as a receptionist for a year and I have like social skills, I have people skills, I can talk on the phone and on email and stuff. And so I applied for loads of jobs and over a month, first time in my life that I wasn't successful with interviews. I'm like, I'm very impressive in interviews usually. I had, I had boasted that I had never had an interview and not been offered the job previously to, uh, to this. And for like a month straight, I had like seven, eight, nine interviews and didn't get, didn't get the job for any of them. Obviously my mental health, my stress and stuff was quite high still. I wasn't happy. I wasn't like as confident or as social as I used to be, but I was improving. I was going more and more and more and more and I think it was around September. I lost more weight. I actually started feeling like good ab about myself again. My fit, my fitness came back. I felt strong. My diet was getting better and better. I became a little bit happier, a bit less stressed. I was meditating more and finally just about seeing some kind of improvements to my mindfulness. And in one random day, I got three job offers and all three, I said, yes. <laughs> I literally they just kept on calling me I just like oh yes I'd like I'd love to I will you know and then I like I had the three options because I told all of them yes and so obviously my, my plan was tell all of them yes take a minute and then tell them no like tell two no so I wrote it down I made the wrong choice here definitely I, when I look back at it now they, I had three choices and I chose the one that would have looked the best but it would have only looked the best like who cares? Like, I, w I was going to say like, oh, because it was with like a big company, big name company, like, oh my God, everyone will think like, oh, I work customer service for them. That's the wrong way to go about it. There was another job that was much closer and it seemed like it had like a youthful vibe and I didn't take that one. I regretted that because I feel like life would have been quite different if I took that job. But I worked this job, this full-time job for one and a half, two months or so and the mental health got worse, way worse. Imagine how I was feeling beforehand, but now I'm working a job which I knew like it wasn't my project, it wasn't my goal, it wasn't anything. And I was grateful for the job and the actual kind of, you know, day-to-day -day work was actually okay. It was just answering calls and taking complaints, which I know that, you know, so having someone scream at you is, not scream at you, but having someone shout and say like, you know, they lost money and stuff. It is quite not a good job to have, but I liked who I worked with. And there was a gym. The, the, the main reason I joined that job is because they had a gym in the workplace. So I thought, oh, if I join this one, then I can go to the gym before work every single day and I'll fit my lifestyle and stuff. But I was making like, okay money. It was the most I had ever made, but it, was, it wasn't it was that great. And in fact, when I used to compare it, that's when I used to get depressed. I used to work those two part-time, you know, the part-time job I worked, I was working two 12 hour shifts. So like 24 hours a week. And I was getting like 800 and something pounds from that. And this full-time job, I was going to work every single day. I was getting like 1,100. It was like 
20, 30 percent more, but it was full time. And when it's, you know, it's full time and also five days instead of two, it just meant that like every single day was like full of work. And so I would come home and yeah, I went to the gym, but I would come home and had just enough time to eat and then go to sleep because I was waking up at 5 a.m. so I could go to the gym. And that dedication, like, come on, I literally, I was waking up all of this time, all of these months, I was still waking up at 5 a.m. to go to the gym. It was pitch black outside. This is UK winter we're talking about. I'm going to have a video up right now. This is what it used to look like when I would be going to work. I would, and I used to take public transport. My commute was like 50 minutes long at this time. And it was like pitch black, but I would do it because because of the gym, because weightlifting is my purpose, it's my passion. It's like the biggest, most important goal of my life. If you were someone else and you were looking into my life, things started looking up. I graduated, I was, you know, really dedicated in the gym. I had like an okay job at like a big national company. Things are looking up. I had like co-workers that I was like pretty friends with and they were really nice people. And a girl who really cared about me. I had like a couple of friends that I was like chilling with and stuff and it looked nice from the outside, but I was crying a lot. The dark, how dark it was, that video I just showed you, that's also how dark it was when I, when I used to come back home. UK winter is like that where it's dark until like 9 a.m. in the morning and then also dark at like 5 p.m. And I used to come home at like half five. No, how was it half? Yeah, half five. I used to finish work at half five, so I used to get home for like 6 p.m. It would be pitch black straight after I'd get off the public transport and I'd be walking like the five, 10 minute walk back to the apartment, I would cry. I would cry whilst walking back up there and just wipe the tears away and just go on as normal. I, I hated life. I was spending all of my time working for like eight pounds an hour for someone else's dream. Like I was, I was sat there making more money, making more value for someone else. And I had dreams of like digital nomad and online income and just making my own business and making my own projects. And this is when I was fully getting into just entrepreneurship. I wanted to make things myself. I wanted to just have a name for myself and not be someone's worker. I didn't want to have a master, a daddy. Like, And when I started doing the math, I realized that working five days a week, 40 hours for such a low wage. So my wage was 17 and a half thousand, 17,500. It was pointless because yes, my wage, you know, was 17,500, but after tax and stuff, it became down to like 15,000. And my part-time job was like 10,000. It just, and I was working full-time for just 5,000 more a year, like 5,000 pounds a year. Like what, what is that? Like what, what is the point in that? I started realizing that like, this is when I started fully going against the idea of full-time jobs. I wrote a, an ebook going against full-time jobs. I called it the full-time job virus where I said, Full-time jobs have spread like a pandemic, like a virus, like it's just a normal way to live now, isn't it? Work 40 hours a week for someone else to get paid minimum wage. As was, I wrote this ebook and I had dreams of like, not really dreams of being an author, but like I just wanted to develop any kind of online income, any project that I could release online that would result in income that meant that I didn't need to work a job instead and because so far the jobs that I did work even though I was grateful for them and I smiled through them and I was like I actually kind of enjoyed them I just didn't actually enjoy the whole concept of working for someone else and also for going to work I hated commuting I hated going to a place to just sit and answer phones what I wanted was to work from my laptop I wanted to be like a digital nomad have some kind of project that brings in online income and you just open up your laptop wherever you are in the world you want to take a trip that's fine take your laptop you get to work during that and make money during it and just open up your laptop just whatever project you've got and so whilst I was working full-time I started thinking okay what are the projects what can I build right now? I was building eBay. The money I was getting from my full-time job, I was putting it into eBay and I was also spending it stupidly. But th this is when I started actually paving a direction in my life. I was thinking, what can I make online income from? And so I started researching. I started like, I got into this concept for so long. I'm talking like, I'm still into it now, but like, 
my my full-time job i only worked there for like two months i literally couldn't handle it after that and i even remember like three or four weeks in there was like a mess up with my pay where they said that i would be paid next week instead they they fucked it up and and they just said like oh i'd have to wait a week i literally took off my lanyard and said i i quit i stood up and started leaving and they the staff there begged me to stay i was like I was honestly like one of the best workers like of my job role where you just answer calls quickly and efficiently and I, I was taking more calls than the people who had worked there for like six months because I was just I'm just like good at this stuff like so I literally just got up I just quit and I actually felt so proud of myself for like not accepting that disrespect of like a lack of pay kind of thing and they just kind of convinced me to stay they like organized an emergency payment and got gave me most of my wage at the right time and stuff and so I stayed. I regretted staying, but like, whatever. Near the, so for the last like few weeks of my time at this job, and this is the only full time job I've ever worked in my life. My last few weeks there, I requested to go part time. I did the math and realized that if I work part time three days a week, I would only lose sixty pounds a week wage. Sixty pounds a week and missing get two days for free and lose 60 pounds. Obviously, 100% I wanted to do that. They messed around for ages, for weeks. They were like, oh, we'll see if we can make it work. We've got to talk to this guy and this guy and this guy. Like, I, why did I wait for it? Two, three weeks, something like that. It took so long. And I remember each and every day was like a countdown where like I was just think like I was going crazy each and every day I just wanted to quit or I just wanted to go part-time I could not stay full-time working for someone else and having these dreams for myself and each day just felt so long and eventually they just come and tell me that they couldn't do part-time that they had like a business need for my position to be full-time which is 100% understandable so I told them that I was going to start accepting part-time job interviews and I'd be leaving like I'd give them like some notice and stuff the next day I went for an interview and got offered the job there and then in the interview so I came back to work the next day and told them and like I just I felt so cocky so happy because like oh you fucked around for so long you messed around for so long trying to let me go part-time and now I'll just go and get my part-time job then left that job started feeling happier and happier and I worked this other part-time job for like five days before I quit and then I got another interview and got an that job during the interview. Like I said, my interviews are impressive. I am like very good at interviews. So this was like two, two interviews, two jobs in a row that I just got the position there and then. And this job, this part-time job was probably my favorite I've ever worked in my life. It was at a homeless accommodation and it was night shifts. So it's kind of scary a little bit, but like I would literally, it's kind of like security. So you'd come in on the night shift and just sit there in the room and the homeless guys who live there, like it's like, you know, the accommodation for them, like short term accommodation, they'd come in, buzz in and I'd just like verify their name and let them in through the door. But no, I wouldn't let them in. I literally just had to press a buzzer. Anyway, my, this is all relevant to my self-improvement because I had worked all these shitty jobs I didn't like and here I was in a job that was paying me the most I had ever been paid, nine pounds an hour, to come in on the night shift and just sit there for eight hours. So in a locked room, maybe 10, 20 times max, 10 times, I would need to just answer the phone and press a button and that was it. I was in a locked room, I was completely safe and there was a TV, I could make some tea. I, I've got like a video I'll try and find where I literally just had my feet up watching Netflix during this time. And I enjoyed this for like a week or so until I realized, you know what? I'm gonna get this self-improvement journey bumped up. I started going to my night shifts and doing more work. I started, I was getting paid to just sit there. So I bought this laptop and I would sit there and I learned how to do drop shipping. I started learning coding, but I didn't enjoy it. But I, I learned how to do drop shipping and I actually got into it for a few months. I like I practiced it for so long. I learned so many things. I made so many different stores. I literally, it was like four, five, six a.m. and I'd be just there on my laptop, just making online income, trying to make online income. I look back and I, I see like such a motivated, hardworking young man. 
He's on his night shift. He's brought his laptop and he's doing more work. I was getting paid to just develop businesses. And my manager was so cool with it as well. Like she was interested in what I was making and stuff. And I, I literally said in the interview, like, okay, so if it's going to be night shift, like, can I do my work? Like, can I? And she was like, yeah, like a lot of the employees we have here are just students. They bring their laptops and do their uni work. I was thinking like, I found like the most gold mine job possible. <laughs> so I worked this job for a, probably about five months or so and coronavirus happened the lockdown happened and i after a long long weighing up i was all of this time i was deciding whether or not to move back home to my family home um that was a very stressful and just very long decision making process i knew that if i left manchester and moved back home it would be permanent and i didn't know how to feel about that. Like move back in with family. But then the reason, the biggest argument for moving home and not living in my student city and not living in like the apartment was because even this job was good, but even then I was working like you know, two night shifts a week, which were quite disruptive to my life. I was working these night shifts and realizing that all of the money that I was making, I was just spending to live there instead of just living here for free. And so the biggest argument was that if I did come home, I wouldn't even need to work any of these shifts. I wouldn't need to work at all. I could put 100% of my time into online income. And I was debating this for a long time. Even with this job, even with the online income journey that I was trying to make, I wasn't really happy. I wasn't doing it enough. This job was quite dis disruptive to my life because it was night shift. It meant that the next day I was just groggy and sleepy and I'd fall asleep all day and then I'd wake up at a weird time and then I'd have the entire day the next day like just off, just wanting to do nothing and just eat junk and barely go into the gym again. And it, well, I was still training quite hard, but I was just, it, I wasn't doing enough in the online projects. And I remember just journaling so many pages, like over months, just thinking, like, oh, if I do this, if I do that, I, I can achieve more. I, you know, I want to spend this many hours this week. I want to spend this many hours on dropshipping and on eBay and on YouTube. And I would just not do it. It was just very, very hard in this environment to do a lot of work do the amount of work that I wanted to do. And so I, I felt unfulfilled still. And so coronavirus happened, lockdown happened. There's so, still so much for me to talk about. I'm literally telling you my life story here, but I feel like if you want to know the entire self-improvement, you do really need to know like all of these details. And coronavirus was very, very stressful. I was working with the homeless who were like literally the most vulnerable out of anyone. And we had this homeless man in the place that I helped as well. Um, his stay in the accommodation was ending and he had literally no one else, nowhere else to stay. So he was going to be like full on homeless on the street in the middle of a pandemic. And I pretty much just made myself responsible for him. And I got help from Reddit. I set him up in a hotel and then I set him up in an Airbnb and all of this was during coronavirus and it was so risky and so stressful. I can't even like explain what I've just said in 10 seconds covered two months and it was like probably the most stressful period of my life. The lockdown just meant that like the gyms were closed and so I didn't work out for a while and I was just eating junk again and I started gaining weight again and for like two months, three months, I was certain that I was going to move back home and that when I move here, my self-improvement, my progress was just going to skyrocket but I just couldn't bring myself to make the, the plunge. And up until I did, until I just decided it, I came here for two days just to see what it was like because I had not been here for like an entire year. I had not seen my family. I had not lived or been inside of this house for like more than a year. And so I just came for two days and straight away I knew it was the right thing. And I was so happy that I just came for two days. I went back and decided to come back here and move back everything for like in three days time. Moved everything back on May eighth and first few days was kind of bad you know I was really upset that I left I was I was sad that I left my girl and everything and I made it clear to her I'm not doing like long distance relationship or anything do you know I mean I'll see you when I see you kind of thing we're not 
official or anything. And that was one of the biggest reasons why I found it difficult to leave as well. Um, but I came here after like a bit of down period where I didn't really feel great or something. I just started working a bit harder and harder and started realizing I had goals and started journaling a bit more. And then I found dopamine detox and reducing instant gratification. And I'm guessing if you watch my videos, then you know the story from that point where I feel very happy now. It feels weird to say that after like all of the story I've just talked about that it feels weird to say like, oh, I feel genuinely happy and and grateful that all of that stuff happened. Everything, all of those tears, all of those stressful moments, that mental health. I'm grateful that it all happened. I look back at it now and the phrase good thing, bad thing, who knows fits so well because I had to be at my lowest points to appreciate and to understand this concept of instant gratification because my lowest points was when I was indulging in instant gratification and my highest points has been when I'm indulging in delayed gratification. And I had to experience all of that to become this person who I am today and to have this, this big of a drive to achieve and to work hard. I'm sad that the previous version of me had to go through it and he felt like not good for so long but it all equaled out because now I'm genuinely happy and I'm happy for all of those experiences yeah I didn't really work hard in university and I partied too much but I look back at it now and I'm so grateful that I did party too much because it's like it all equaled out those experiences now mean that I'm satisfied with that lifestyle I'm satisfied that I got to have that party social lifestyle that so many people are envy envious of and so many people want, but very little people actually get to enjoy that lifestyle. And I got to like overindulge in it. I'm, I'm grateful that I overindulged in Netflix and junk food and just chilling and munchies. And <laughs> I'm grateful that I overindulged in all that because now I understand the importance of doing the opposite. And I also understand the red flags and the what to avoid, how to know that you, I'm about to get into one of those periods. This is the longest video I've ever made in my life. I actually think it's, I'm going to upload it and it's going to be like 40 minutes or something because there's like four video clips which are like half an hour each. So that is my entire six year self-improvement journey. Well, wow. I've just told you my life story. So everything you've just known about me, everything you've just learned about me, if you feel like the things that I've been through, the experiences I've had and the memories that I hold and the knowledge that I've learned, if you feel like that's something that could be beneficial to you, that is what I'm going to be teaching. Yeah, it sounds cringy. Like, oh yeah, make sure you subscribe and cl click the bell button. But if you feel like you can benefit from the things I have in my mind, I'm going to be putting my mind onto these videos. And if the things that I just said that I've experienced are things that you either want to do or want to avoid, that's what I'm going to be explaining in all of my videos. And if you feel like it's going to have some kind of benefit to you, then yeah, I have to say the cringy line, but make sure you smash that subscribe button and also click on the bell for the notifications and stuff, because that's what I'm going to be teaching on my channel. I'm going to be making videos that I wish 18 year old version of me saw. That's a good way to put it. That's why I've based my videos around improving physical and mental health, because you are... Uh, both of them are so important. You cannot underestimate the importance of mental health or physical health. And we have to just improve both of those factors. There's so many things you can do to improve them, but there's so many things we do to negate them, to make them worse. And my channel is about finding those things and stopping them and also increasing the things that make everything better so that if you are in the moments of life, like I've explained with those down moments where it makes you cry, then I'm going to try and help you get out of that. And if you're in like the medium part or you're going up and up and up, then I'm going to help you try and push that forward. All right. So 
I'm really glad that I made this video and that I've got it all edited in time for the Monday 6.30 upload that I said I would. Uh, I didn't mention this when I just after I finished it, but editing it has made me realize that a major part of my self-improvement has come from the, the social life, the happiness that comes from actually having friends and somewhat popularity um, and dating life. And the two things really that I've been teaching on my channel have been physical health and mental health, but I've just kind of forgotten to teach those other things that are very, very important. I, I mentioned so many times in this video that I researched things and I just kept on trying to improve my confidence, my social life and how to actually talk to people. And I feel like the ability to talk to people, the ability to make friends and to feel like you're high value and everyone wants to be your friend is as important as training your mental state, training your physical body because it's, it's like a complete circle then. Your mental health is not going to be great if you are lonely and you'll be more likely to be motivated to improve your physical health and to get into the gym when you have more social experiences booked in your calendar because obviously then you're just outside in public more. So I'm actually really glad that I made this video because I'm using it as a sort of direction for my up and coming videos, the content and the guides and the knowledge that I want to share with everyone watching this. It's made me realize the importance of that social life and the dating life. And so I'm definitely going to consider teaching some of that as well. So if you watch this far, I am grateful. I can't believe you've actually just sat and watched me talking for like one and a half hours. <laughs> but I guess we're like best friends now since you know my life story. But if you watch this far, help me out. You obviously like my video, so help me out. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Start a little discussion in the comments about your favorite part of the video. Ask me a question. Get up that audience engagement and then let's get me monetized. Let's get me like growing and growing. I'm enjoying this YouTube grind. So yeah, I hope you did enjoy this. I hope that you've learned a lot from this. And yeah, take care.